Let us pray. So, Heavenly Father, we continue to remain grateful for the gift of life that you gave us. An honor and privilege it is that we are gathered together to fellowship together as you instructed and commanded us that we are never to neglect the habit of coming together. And now as we listen to your word, we ask you that you open our hearts and that you communicate to us according to our specific needs. That your word will lift us, your word will rebuke us, your word will correct us, your word shall not return to you void, Lord. But you bless us, you bless our families, and you bless us, Lord, as a body of Christ. That we shall arise and be true worshippers indeed. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Congregation, this morning, may I draw your attention to the gospel reading that we just read this morning, Matthew chapter 4, and particularly the verses 21 to 24 that we have dwelled on. And from this, I've entitled this morning's reflection on what the gospel is talking about, which is talking about true worship. True worship. And so we'll be talking about true worshipers because that's what Jesus was trying to bring out. Now, by definition, you will read through the scriptures various definitions of worship, and you will read through different definitions as well in the different dictionaries that we may have. But in all these different definitions that we have, one thing is common, and which is that worship is simply giving God his worth. That's what it is. We are giving God his worth. And from the scriptures, here's a woman who brings out uh, issues. And so Jesus is responding to what the woman has said. Now the woman was asking and talking to Jesus barely on account on where one must worship from. To say we are on this mountain, but we are also to worship in Jerusalem. So she was bringing out more of a place, a location of worship. She was asking Jesus where we need to worship from. But Jesus' response was correcting her question to say, don't dwell on where you are to worship me from, but you are much more to dwell on your attitude and how you are worshiping. And so Jesus brings out two key fat points, which is that you are to worship in truth and in spirit. And so this is the message that Jesus was then giving back to the question of where shall we worship from? Say, no, 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 it's not about the place you shall worship from. Because actually God is spirit, meaning he's omnipresent, he's present everywhere. And because he's present everywhere, whether on the mountain, in Jerusalem, or in Samaria, but everywhere, or in Zambia, in Egypt, wherever that it is, God is present. So therefore, if you really want to worship God, must you run to the mountain only, or must you get to Jerusalem only? But wherever you are, you can worship the Lord your God. Of course, with due regard of where we are able to gather like this together, in a location. And so he brings out those two points of worshiping in truth and in spirit. Congregation, Jesus was trying to address the issue of our attitude in worship. I was scrolling through social media, as you may all be aware. You know, when you're not scrolling through this place, it's like you're missing out on what is happening. And so there was a short clip, um, a comedy clip, on how this young man was going for an interview. And you know when you're going for an interview for your first job, 
even the clothes might not be yours. Because you're only permitted to borrow clothes for your first interview and sometimes your first date. And so he borrows his uh, a suit and smartly dressed. It was very season. Now as he walks, a good Samaritan splashes him water. And lo and behold, he couldn't hold himself and he baptized that gentleman with all the words he could baptize him with. Little did he know that upon getting to the boardroom for his interview, that was one of the senior personnel seated on the bench of uh, interviewers. And so when everybody else had interviewed, asking questions and made their comments, they now had to wait for him to make his comments. And he says, I see a lot of pride in the humility of this young man. I see a lot of pride in the humility of this young man. And you know, somewhat, it's sometimes what goes on in worship. That when we are worshiping God, we, there is a tempo that changes. Even the instrumentalist, when it's time for worship, uh, when we are dancing, we'll be told, let's get into praise and worship. We'll be dancing, we'll put vitenges around our waist and we can celebrate all that we can. And then at some point, you hear the worship leader now tell you, now we are entering into a time of worship. And when that time of worship comes, even the keyboard people change the tempos. And everybody else, lo and behold, we are closing our eyes and lifting up our arms in the heavens. And this is what Jesus was trying to address, that it's not the outward attitude that we ought to portray in our worship, but it is the lifestyle that we need to have. That worship isn't a moment we get into, but worship is a life that we live. And so everywhere, therefore, that we go, or in any circumstance that we might be in, it's a reminder that we are actually worshiping the Lord. And we are representing worship in that sense. And that's the reason why in all that we do, through the scriptures, you will notice the different uh, instances of how we worship the Lord our God. The Bible reminds us or teaches us that there were two people that came to give. And so one had packed their offering that others, may, uh, that others were even able to notice the quantity of that brown envelope, so we call it. And one gave a coin as it was noticed. In that passage, in the context of worship, Jesus picks out the woman that dropped the coin in the offertory bag to say she's the one that gave true worship. That it wasn't what was seemingly being done on the outside, but it is the attitude that one has towards giving. That even as we worship the Lord our God in our offerings, in our givings, and in our thanksgiving, in our tithing, not only are we to remain faithful, but we are also to worship God. Because the scripture is silent. I mean, what he brought was what he could. I mean, he could afford it. He could manage it. The Bible is clear. It came from him. It says I was a rich man. So he had the resources. But as much as he had, the attitude at which he was giving is what Jesus pointed out to have said, no, not this, but rather the other one had a clean attitude, an attitude that was humble in itself and not like the other young man who had humbleness in his pride. Congregation, we are all being challenged to check our attitude as we worship God. We worship God in our giving, we worship God through our gifts, our talents. We worship God through our abilities that the Lord gives us. We worship God through all that God gives us. When God has entrusted you with a particular assignment in life, it could be a leader like we are going through today, where most of the ministries and cell groups have elected leaders, and today we'll be electing our executive leadership that that's a service that the Lord is calling you to. 
and that in the position that the Lord will entrust you with or in the position that the Lord has entrusted you with, you are to worship the Lord your God in that position. And you worship God by the attitude at which you lead. So if your attitude is right before God, that is us worshiping our Lord through the position. But yet if our attitude is wrong, that is us having Jesus speak to us today that we are to check our attitude. Secondly, congregation, is that the Bible draws us to the attention that we are to worship God in truth and in spirit. And so he brings out another aspect, not only an attitude of truth and honesty and humility, but he brings out an aspect of the spirit, which is the dimension. That this God you are worshiping, you are to worship him in the dimension that he is in. And so he is spirit, and you can only worship him as he should be worshipped if you do so in spirit. Thus, and that's where the issues of salvation comes in, that if we haven't given our lives to Christ, how shall we worship him in spirit? If we are going to take everything at fleshly as it is, how shall we worship him in spirit? And throughout the scripture again we notice, even in the second reading that we read this morning, on the call to literally live spiritual lives. And Ephesians, actually the letter to the Ephesians brings it out much, much more to say we wrestle not against flesh and blood. That if you and I are going to worship, we are to worship in the spirit. If you, are go, if you and I are going to win battles, we must first of all win them in the spiritual realm. Child of God, we can win earthly battles, but if we have lost heavenly battles, lo and behold, we have not acquired much. Child of God, we can, before people, seem to be the best that we can, but if the spirit is not with us, it's nothing. And Jesus says that if we're going to worship him and yet we are, the spirit is missing of us, in a way he refers to us as simply making noise gongs. Let us strive to worship him in spirit. Let us strive as a body of Christ, as a church, as families, and as indeed as individuals to always look up to this God and worship him in the dimension that he is in. As you read through the scriptures as I conclude, is that this is a Samaritan woman that thought she couldn't speak to Jesus and she had on her list seemingly a lot of don'ts than do's. The verses, before the verses we have read, as you go home to read through the first uh, verses of chapter 4, the woman was at a well, she's asking for water, and all that narration, it shows you and I that this woman had a different perspective towards Jesus. But yet, as Jesus is correcting it on an aspect of where we should worship from and how we should worship, there's one thing that you notice through the woman, that number one, there is peace that she finally has. Because she thought she couldn't give Jesus a drink. She thought her of all people couldn't literally come to openness to interact with Jesus. But yet, as she is brought to the realities of the word of God on what worship must be, she gets peace in her life. If you want peace, let us worship God in truth and in spirit. There is freedom that you are able to see from the bondage of ignorance from this woman that she's coming forth and literally gaining knowledge. There is also revelation that you are able to see this woman acquire because Jesus is now correcting her that you know what, you are not to go to places to seek to worship, but it's about your attitude and how you worship this God. And so now she's returning back home with a revelation of what worship is and what worship should be. Congregation, 
when Jesus said he came to have life and have it in abundance, it is for people that are filled with the spirit of the living God. That abundant life that we all aspire for, we all endeavor, we all wish for, is for those that are, shall choose to worship the Lord God Almighty, not only in truth, but also in spirit. Today, as we have our elections, as we choose appoint leaders, today as we think together, plan together of what we achieve, what we are to achieve in the coming year, we are to do so with revelation, with discernment, and with peace. What is it that God wants us to achieve? Can we, as people now that are, are able to have a right attitude before the Lord and the people that are filled with the Holy Spirit, is that we look at things now as the Lord sees them. And those are the prayers that we all endeavor to seek God, to say, Lord, open our eyes that we may see. What? Why do we want God to open our eyes when our eyes are already open? It is the spiritual eyes that we're asking God to open. What is it that we want to hear when we can hear ourselves? It is to hear the Lord God Almighty himself. And so, may our AGM, what a good day to have an AGM, on a day like this that we talk about worship. But may our AGM be in truth, and in spirit, that it will reflect an attitude of worship and honestness and a discernment of where God is taking us because we are hearing and seeing where God is taking us as we have always heard from him. May our lives reflect worship. We shouldn't always enter times of worship or moments of worship, but let us live a life of worship in our speech, in our attitude, and in all that we do. Are we worshiping the Lord? Even when we have been injured greatly in all that, you know, we, we don't have control over being injured, but control over how we respond. Are we responding in worship or we are responding in pride? yet covered in humility. May the Lord help us have a right attitude before the Lord and to be able to get the Spirit of God that will preserve us at all times. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.